the average Jamaican put away this concept that the average Jamaican is our ugly faced man that will hurt you. That's not the truth. The average Jamaican is a warm, loving, considerate person. That's the average Jamaican. Now, you have people who are not dreadlock, not Rastafari by countenance. But if you talk to them, you hear them, Jano. Yes, I. Rasta no. Yeah, yes, I. And when you talk to them closely, you say, so what? Oh yeah, I say, I'm a Rasta too, you know. Not just so I do have my locks, I say, hold on there. Uh, what you saying? I say, yeah man, I am Rastafari too. I see Rastafari, why you don't just stand up and defend the whole away? Why you don't stand up and take up? That's the cry now, you know. Why we don't get up and straighten this place and put it the way it should be. If you notice though, the response of the people in politics, let's do a little bit of mathematics. Two, two, two million five hundred people live here. There is only 800,000 of voters list, of which 50% don't vote. That's 400,000 divided in two again. So out of 2 million 500 people, is 400,000 people deciding what happened in this country. That's wrong. Now, the system set by the gods of England are not good for us. Because if you read the prayer that is said in the parliament, it says, let us learn how to keep our queen happy. It's, you can read it. Now, what about keeping your people happy? Because governments are not here to grow economies and build roads. Another job they have is to make their people happy with a quality of life which is worthwhile. Now, how can this be when you are advertising your country as a place where come down and invest for our labor down here is cheap, that's slavery. That is slavery. So, in a, in a essence, with all the struggling we're struggling, we still don't escape that part of it yet. If you look at it, in 1838, when the black man was freed, they just took off a chain. He didn't get anything. In America, it was 40 acres and a mule. In Jamaica, we just took off a chain of the black man and let him go. Now, where is he going to live? So he has to come back to you. Because he doesn't own land and he can't swim to Africa and he don't have a boat. So he has to live somewhere. So you, the slave master, say, okay, well, I can give you that plot of land, but it's 20 years of your labor. That's another form of slavery. Now he's going to die before. Who's going to take up that? His son. Now, Modified slavery is what's happening now. You have a wife and four children all going to school. Try to lose your job because then you can't pay your rent, your water, your light bill, you can't pay food, you can't take care of nothing. That's, that's a chain too. You're chained by responsibility. So it's a sophisticated slavery going on right now very sophisticated and Rastafari burns that. Uh, many people will say, or they used to say, don't listen to the Rasta, you know, because if, if one thing you're going to use to judge a man is how well he has progressed in life, what he has acquired, well Rastafari wouldn't be nothing because the way you persecute him and marginalize him, him don't have nothing. Okay, now, is it right for I and I and I to have the greatest creed in the world? Sick, be nourished, aged be taken care of, the youths. We have a, a creed that covers everything, but what? Why can't we manifest it for people can say, but Rasta, you know, so much on us suffer and own a life stay, yes, but how, why is it that way? 
it's that way because the system marginalized Rasta from day one. Now, that slavery marginalization where you didn't own land and you had to pay by your labor still exists. Because even now, people in Jamaica don't have a living space. Now, here is another big hypocrisy. United Nations, over the head of these people, have said, Rastafari, we recognize you as culturally indigenous. <coughs> what does that mean? Have we suddenly become indigenous? No, we were that way for a long time. Now, the rights that accrue to indigenous people, are we just now going to get them, or were we entitled to them from day one? If we were entitled to them for day one, as we are, who gave you the right to trample on it? Who gave you the right to bring people's life to the level where it's at now? Where the question is, Rastafari I know has to advise these people, say, look, in the earlier days, you could consider fighting for your rights. Now, as a general, I would not lead my people into any such thing that would cause greater suffering upon my people. Jamaica is not hard to turn over, you know. It's only 14,000 soldiers. Not hard. A military mind can easily conceive how to do it. But what's going to happen to our people after? when we mash up the power station and mash up all the roads and mash up all the bridges and the rich man run away. What happened to us? We left right here with no international agency to help us because they're not helping us now. And we would have destroyed our place. So there has to be another way. The way is the way of the mind. And that's what, what you come into now, the generation gap between Rastafari before and this young generation. I will admit, this young generation knows about their identity. But the other most important thing that goes with the identity is the liberty. Now, Rastafari is not a religion. Not a religion. So we burn the World Council of Churches too. But Rastafari has a code of conduct, a way in which we live, principles which we abide by, truth, honor, justice, thoughtfulness, consideration, kindness, all those things are attributes. The other side of the world is what we are faced with, anger, hatred, contempt, prejudice, that's the other side of the world. We don't live Despite all of that, Rastafari hold their heads highly. Not because we are megalomaniacs who have no delusion of grandeur. When we say the King of Kings is our father, it's not a falsehood. And we don't, we don't take unto ourselves any power. We attribute all the glory and all the honor to the King of Kings. So it's not something that we take upon ourselves. We only ascribe to struggle and to achieve what is good for our nation, our people. That's what, what's our concern. Our concern is meaningful improvements in the life of Rastafari to guide the youths, to show them, say, look, uh, you don't need to get so sad that you feel that the only way out is to burn down the place for we as veterans are telling us to know that's not the way